Have we had any break? Uh, I'm not sure that we have Susan. We don't have Susan yet. She was here. In Susan, the Susan says the host keeps denying registration. Oh. Well, I have no idea. Um, if you're talking to her, can you please ask her to try again? I don't think I denied her access. Hmm? I didn't see her name up there. I was trying to change the name. If she comes oh. up with a number. Yes, I know, but I didn't even see the number. Where is she? Is, she, is there a number there? Nope. No. Christine here. Oh, she yes. was. I think so. She just has her video turned off. Yeah. Uh, we're live now. Uh, you might want to um, ask Councillor Edie to. Okay. I think, uh, Councillor Edie, if you're still in on the meeting, can you turn on your video? We're about to start. Oh, perfect. There we go. Thank you. All right. So we just have Councillor Freddie John. Seems to be having some difficulties. Hopefully, we'll get those resolved soon. All right, I'll go ahead and uh, start the meeting. We'll hope that uh, Councillor Freddie John gets in here soon. Turn the mic off, small. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, I'll go ahead and call this uh, meeting of council to order. Please note that this meeting will be held virtually and available for public viewing on YouTube. As part of the public participation, if you have any questions regarding items on the agenda, please submit them by email to mail at ektwp.ca. Questions received prior to the meeting will be addressed during the public question period, which is limited to 15 minutes. First item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. I'm looking for a mover and seconder to accept. Uh, moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Renault. So the October 13th, 2020 regular meeting of council agenda be adopted. All those in favor? And opposed to that, everybody. Carrie, thank you. Does any member uh, of council have a pecuniary interest regarding any item on tonight's agenda? And if so, the general nature thereof? Okay, seeing none. We'll move on then to the adoption of the minutes. I'm looking for a mover and seconder to receive the regular meeting minutes uh, from September 28th and the special meeting minutes of October 5th. Moved by Councillor Brayton, seconded by Councillor E, that the regular meeting of council meeting minutes of September 28th, 2020, and the special meeting of council meeting minutes of October 5th, 2020, be adopted by council. Any comments, questions, or concerns regarding that set of minutes, either of those sets of minutes? Okay, I don't see any coming from council. I just had uh, one question to our administrative clerk I'm on page five of our agenda package. That's the minutes of the September 28th uh, meeting. And uh, this is with regards to the uh, quiet hours noise bylaw. Uh, my understanding is that uh, you have started looking into maybe some options that will come back to council at, at some point. Yes. I started to review some other uh, the domain of cities. Right. And I will hopefully have a report to you in the next couple of meetings. Right. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. And one other thing that I had noted here, on, so on the very final, I'm now on page 10 of our agenda package, the very final page of our uh, special, or sorry, the September 28th. Um, just looking at the reporting out around the closed meeting, I'm not sure exactly what correction is required here, but talks about it, um, having met in closed sessions uh, to discuss two items as listed on the agenda and resolution and gave direction to staff. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a um, typo. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can correct that. Councillor Renault also has a question. Oh, thank you. Uh, all right, so I'm finished now. Councillor Renault, go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, if you could uh, refer to numbers of your pages as the number of that particular uh, section of the agenda rather than the whole agenda because on ours uh, the last page of the minutes it's seven of seven or 17 where was it get back up here seven of seven but you said page 10 and that's very confusing ah okay i'll uh, i'll do my best i won't be able to do that for you uh, this meeting but 
the full agenda package, I guess, is numbered a little differently than the way that you receive it. So um, I'll do my best for the future and I'll try and do it uh, by a different type of description because I have a few notes on some other items. But uh, thank you for that uh, feedback, Councillor Renault. Thanks. Okay, uh, so any further comments or questions at this point? Okay, all those in favor? And opposed, if any, that's everybody carried, thank you. Is our fire chief with us? Uh, yep, our fire chief is with us. And uh, funny you should say that. We're now on uh, section five, so item 5.1. This is uh, the tender for our uh, fire station three construction. And uh, we have four of them that we have received electronically. So no particular order other than this is how they happen to be stacked in the, in the pile on the desk here. The first one is from RD Steel Construction. And the amount before HST is two million ninety nine thousand two hundred and fifty nine and eighty two cents. So that's RD Steel Construction for two oh nine nine two five nine and eighty two cents plus HST. Ready. The next one that I have is from Jumec Construction, J-U-M-E-C. Now, the, the summary page here does not clarify whether this is prior to or inclusive of HST. So I'll simply read the, the figure that I have here. Their price is 2821000 358 zero cents. That's from Jumec Construction for 2821358 even. Right, the next one is from uh, Bourgeon Construction, B O U R B O B O U R. G O N and their price before HST is one million eight hundred and sixty one thousand four hundred and fifty nine even. So that's Bourgeon at one eight six one four five nine even plus HST. And finally, we have one from uh, Freecon, F-R-E-C-O-N, General Contractors. And their, their price before HST is 2,083,000 even. So that's from Freecon at 2083 -000. Plus HSD. So there are the four submissions as noted. And so I have a motion. Uh, I'm looking for a mover and seconder uh, to receive those tender submissions and refer them to staff for review and recommendation. So moved by uh, Councillor Brayton, seconded by Councillor Linton, the FES 2020 03 Fire Station 3 tender submission be referred to staff for review and recommendation. Right. And our administrative clerk. Uh, just a reminder to council that it was um, suggested that we have a special meeting of council on Monday night, next Monday night, um, pending the ability to get the reviews done in the next two days. So the agenda may not go out until the Friday. Okay, thank you for that. Um, any comments or questions before we refer this to staff? Okay, all those in favor? That's everybody carried, thank you. Excuse me for just a moment. 
papers that are required later in the meeting. Sorry about that. Okay, on to section six, our delegations. We do have a delegation uh, this evening. Uh, Philippe Massoy, I hope I pronounced, uh, pronounced that correctly, from the Brockville Pickleball Club. And so we'll see if uh, we can get him joined into the meeting here. Uh, we'll the, to, uh, the actual um, um, speaker is, I believe, uh, Susan, but I will move them all in. Okay. So, that, uh, so we're currently moving our uh, delegation participants into the Zoom meeting. Um, if it's okay with council, I will do speaker view so that you will hear only the, the speakers. Sure. So, uh, you should be along. Yeah. How did that happen? Go over to panelists just to make sure that they're... Yeah. And just, uh, bear with us as we okay. see. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Here come the, there's a little bit of a lag sometimes from when we let people in from the virtual waiting room into the virtual chambers. And so sometimes it takes a minute for them to show up on our screen, but let's see at least two of them here. So I'm, I'm not sure who's actually going to be uh, presenting, but uh, the virtual podium is, is yours. Okay, fair enough. All right. And I think you're unmuted, right. so go ahead at your leisure. Okay, uh, thank you, Mayor uh, Burrow and councillors for giving us the opportunity to present at your meeting this evening. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm Sue Hunter, and I'm joined here tonight by Philip Masoy and uh, George DeYoung, who's not quite with us yet. Maybe he's just not got his video on. I'm not sure um, who we are. We're representing the Brockville Pickleball Club, and uh, we're currently 300 members strong, and we're growing uh, daily. We have players of all ages. However, uh, mostly seniors, men and women, with all skill levels, uh, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. We have a, web, a website and Facebook page where members communicate regularly. Our members all have the same values. They wanna have fun when they're playing and they've embraced the game of pickleball as a means to stay fit and healthy, both physically and mentally. Uh, we wanna be inclusive to, pr to promote pickleball and most importantly, to belong to a welcoming club where we can have meaningful social interactions. So what is pickleball? You might ask, some, some may know and some may not know. So pickleball is, uh, um, is the fastest growing sport in North America. There is, um, um, I'm not sure there was a package, a presentation. I'm not sure if you all have that with you or not, but there's some photos in there. Um, I believe it's in the third page. It's showing, uh, showing pickleball players in action. Um, it's a court game, so that would be on the, uh, this photo. That's my technology working for me here. Um, it's a court game that combines the elements of badminton, table tennis, and tennis. And it can be played by two players or four players. The paddle is solid, like a ping pong paddle, except for probably twice the size. Uh, it's either a composite or a graphite material. And the ball is a hollow polymer ball that resembles a wiffle ball. And the net is two inches lower than a tennis net. The court, however, as you will see on, as I said, this, this photo here, will show one court, which is 20 feet wide by 44 feet long. Um, it's very close to the size of a badminton uh, court. Um, the net though is, is two inches lower. And whether you're playing singles or doubles, you're using that whole court. It doesn't get smaller if you're only playing two people on there. It's still, you're using the whole court. So what, uh, what are the current challenges that are faced by our club? Um, if you could have a look at this Annex 1 here, this is our current space. That's a Google Earth view. <laughs> Um, so our, our club, our club will be leaving the current facility, uh, of, of Stroger on in the near future. We don't have a specific date, but, uh, what kind of facility is needed? Uh, and on Annex 2, you will see there is a, another photo which shows you the layout that we would be looking for in the future. 
which is, I believe, page eight. It's the last page of your uh, package that you would have received. So what we're looking for would be um, building eight pickleball courts on an asphalt pad with perimeter chain link fence, a clubhouse with office, a storage room, men's and women's washrooms, as well as area for parking. The kind of site that we're looking for um, ideally is fully serviced, relatively flat, well-drained, easy to access with ample parking spaces and away from any home. 150 feet minimum in all directions would be what would be ideal. Uh, we've, identif we've identified Gainford Park uh, located at 1831 Oxford Street as being potentially such a site. That site is located within the boundary, I believe, of Elizabethtown Kitley Township, and the park has a baseball field, which it appears to be currently unused, at least looking at it um, recently. So we're here to ask council today to consider Gainford Park as a site for Brockville Pickleball Club, looking for us to explore its feasibility and ultimately negotiate some terms and conditions of a memorandum of understanding with Brock Brockville Pickleball Club for that specific site for us to look at, at building on. Um, see what I'm missing here, bear with me. I'm gonna go back to our Stroger uh, Stroger site and what we had done there. When we, um, back in 2015, we approached the city and they painted lines. There were two tennis courts, as you can see in the photographs, uh, two tennis courts, and they painted uh, pickleball court lines because the net is only two inches difference. We could still use the tennis court with that existing net. We just lowered it two inches. And uh, so we had two courts there. So I did fine for 2015, 16, 17, we approached council. Um, what we noticed, nobody was playing tennis on those courts. Um, the, the courts have probably been there for 40 years, but not really well attended at all and not looked after maintenance wise, weeds growing, cracks, etc. So we approached them and asked about doing one of the courts into four pickleball courts of which we were approved to do. Uh, it was a $15,000 cost. We did all the labor. Uh, they provided $9,000 in financing and we did $6,000 ourselves. And we did over 600, 650 hours of labor, just all pickleball players and, and volunteers, part of our group that did that. We sourced the materials, um, the city stored them and then brought them to us as we needed them. And that went really, really well. So at that time, going in there, we probably only had about 40 players and it's just grown and grown. So pickleball is played there pretty much every day of the week, seven days a week, sometimes two or three different times of the day uh, by several different groups, as I say, different levels. Sometimes there's women, sometimes men, sometimes it's mixed, uh, just various groups of people, but it's pretty much every day of the week. I would probably say at least a couple hundred visits a week by people on the four courts. And many times there's a group of say 25 people or 30 people. And of course with four courts, you've only got 16 people playing. So there's quite a weight um, and it's becoming more and more of a weight. So we're looking at doing eight courts and we've, we revisited the city to do that. Um, and we were approved the cost to do that second court into four more pickleball courts was substantially higher because the, um, just because of the um, disrepair of, of that court, it was in terrible, terrible shape. It needs to be leveled. The other one didn't, we just resurfaced it and we painted it, uh, but this one would need a lot more work to be done. So there was a higher expense uh, involved in doing that. So we've been raising our money. The, the city had committed uh, 16,000 and we committed eight of which we had um, got our eight together and uh, ordered products, they I believe are at the city right now. In the interim though, there have been some, uh, a few issues with, um, it's, it's a, I don't, you can see from the overhead picture that it's really, the area that it's in, the two courts, you can see that there's homes very, very, very close by. And um, there's, there's a few people that just have this not in my backyard kind of, attitude about, about it and, and I guess we can understand that but uh, it, it has created quite a 
quite a bit of a, an issue. So we don't know exactly what's going to happen with the city, whether they're going to say we can go ahead or not to do that. I mean, we've, we've been approved for it, but then we don't see a resolution for this um, this this group that is uh, sort of protesting it because they're saying it's too loud and and what have you. And and interestingly, though, the same people that are saying that today helped us through. Um, they were there watching and said, "My gosh, you guys are doing a great job. The courts look great. Oh my, you guys are." They they came out and they watched us. We tried to get them to come out and play, and they said, "Well, you know, we're working still, so we're not um, we're not able to come out right now, but." And one of the neighbors actually supplied us with all the water through our whole project of getting those four carts courts done. He brought his hose right down. He says, you come up and connect it and take all the water you need. And um, at any rate, um, the, both of these neighbors that are um, in the house closest, or it's a duplex, I guess you could say, have not been very pleased uh, this summer. I think it's just too many people. For 30, 40 years, there was nobody there on those courts. Nothing was happening, or maybe, I don't know, I wasn't here 40 years ago, but from everybody we've spoken to, nobody seems to ever remember them being busy courts. And um, and now it is busy. You know, as the city will say, it's a city asset. And that's really what they like to see is it, to see it be busy and thriving. And that's what it's, that's what it's doing. Um, we've tried, we've got signs saying, you know, keeping noise down, which we try and do our best. If, if there's only two courts being used, we always take the two courts that are furthest away from the neighbors. We do, we do everything we can do, but it just doesn't seem to appease them. Um, uh, the thought of doing a sound barrier on the fence, it's, I believe it's 12 feet fence, uh, Philip, Philip, you can nod on that, 12 or 10, 12 feet. Um, it'd be about a $20,000 cost to do any kind of a, a sound barrier on that fence that would be worth worthwhile. So, so we're not sure where that's at. So we started looking at different places and, and uh, that's how we came across the one on Oxford, that part where the ball field is. And we wondered whether th that uh, Elizabeth Town, Kitley Township might be interested in working with us towards that end. And uh, Feel free to ask questions. I've kind of glossed over a lot here, so. Oh, that's good. Thank you very much. That, that was perfect. I was about to apologize for breaking in, but just to let you know that we normally have a sort of a, a time limit for presentations, but I sense that you were nearing the finish line, so we're all good. Uh, so Thank you. I'll open it up uh, to the rest of council for any questions. And um, so I'm gonna ask our administrator to switch the view again, I think, so that I can see if hands are going up. I see Councillor Linton but there are some other council members that were out of view and I couldn't see them. So go ahead, Councillor Linton. Just have a question about Gainford Park. The, um, who, who is that currently under? Is that owned by the township or? So, so this was a question that uh, I posed to our administrator clerk earlier when I was uh, preparing for tonight's meeting. And, and our understanding is that's not something that's under the control. It, it is within our borders, but it's not what we would consider a township park. Um, we're unclear as to the precise owners this time. I don't think it, it would be the Royal Ottawa Hospital, but it, it could be or one of the tenants there, you know, at the, uh, the psychiatric hospital site or the, the former site. Okay, just as a follow up to that, I guess, even have, has any thought been given to uh, Rouse Corners? I don't know where that is. That would be just just north of the old Coram store. Oh, okay. Um, so that's that's fairly rural there, which means that there wouldn't be houses really all all around either, right? That that would be a good location, and, and it's fairly flat. And so that put up there, and like I just. Electricity there. Yeah, so so the uh, thing it. dropped out here. I think you were talking about Rouse Corners. You mentioned near Corn Stores. So just a, a nod, Councillor Linton. Uh, were you talking about Rouse Corners? Okay. And so to our administrative clerk, you wanted in on this as well. Um, Gaines Gainsford Park was um, maybe informally used by ball tournaments from the city of Brockville for years. And I'm not sure if they didn't have an agreement with Ontario Realty to, to be able to use it. 
um, and maintain it on their own dollar. Uh, browse corners, the one thing that may be missing from that is they noted that they would like service property and it's not service. Yeah, so there's uh, there's some water supply there. Uh, not sure about the, the condition of it being potable or not. There is electricity. I don't believe we have septic service there anymore at this point. Um, so just so that you're aware of the, the conditions there at that location. Uh, Councilor Linton, you wanted to uh, follow up? I was just gonna say there's no uh, there's no service there again for park either. There's no no bathrooms or anything there either. Um right. I so I guess the services run along the, the street, so they might be able to, to tie in, whereas we don't even have that to offer to tie into out at uh, Browns Corners. So, all right. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, go ahead. Um, and I can't see your name again, so I'm going to have to Sue. call you Sue. I remember it's you. it's Sue. Thank you. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, we didn't we didn't have the uh, we wouldn't have been able to probably do the washrooms in that traditional manner either at Stroger Park where we currently are. Uh, Philippe, uh, if, if maybe he could just speak for a moment just to speak to that because um, he might have some information around what could be done outside of the traditional washrooms. Well, what we were thinking is to put on an olding tank because uh, the use is, is there, but it's not a big use and it's very seasonal. There's, uh, we were going to just connect an holding tank and have it pump at the, on a regular basis. Yeah, unfortunately, my understanding is the, uh, the health unit uh, is basically not allowing new installations of holding tanks. There are some exceptions if you have an existing one, but even then, quite often, they're requiring conversion. Um, our library, our main library location actually used to be served by holding tanks. And we were forced to go to a, a full remote filtration system and with a pump and everything else. So that, that's something you might want to be aware of. Uh, okay. so good thought, but uh, probably won't pan out. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I would suggest, unless councillors have any other questions, I would suggest that at this point, um, perhaps your best bet would be to get in touch with um, uh, the MPP's uh, office uh, and find out the, the status, uh, whether it is owned by Infrastructure Ontario, um, what their willingness would be, and, and so on. And certainly if if there's something that is required of us in terms of permission or participation, or who knows what, uh, then by all means, feel free to, to send us a letter and let us know what the requirements are. But um, nice presentation and, and very interested to, to know about your club and, and what you want to do moving forward. But I don't think we're in a position to help very much. So uh, our administrator has some comments here and then I see Councilor Linton again. So um, we could probably provide them with a um, the ownership and the address that we at least send the, the tax buildings to, we can provide that to them. Okay. All right. Thank Fair you. enough. That'll help maybe as a first little step. Uh, Councilor Linton? I guess another spot up in the, uh, would be that the Rito Institute there up on the hill where they have the lawn bowling. Is there anything down in there a little further that would do that? They do have, I think there's bathrooms and stuff in for that too, I think. Um, the lawn bowl um, near the near the mental hospital. Yeah. So is that an option that you've uh, you've explored at all? Uh, the my understanding is the property belonged to also Construction Ontario, and my understanding is the piece that piece of land is for sale actually, and the lawn bowling is has been receiving a notice that uh, if a sale happened, they don't know if the new owner will still entertain the viability of that uh, club. Uh, uh, there is uh, uh, two tennis courts there. There are two tennis courts. It uh, could have been ideal uh, location. Unfortunately, uh, we don't know what uh, happened in, uh, to the property in the future. Right. All right, so at this point, I guess we have some information that we'll forward on to you um, to at least uh, help you with your, your efforts to speak to the, to the right party. Um, and then uh, if you make headway there, then perhaps we'll see you again if there's something for the township to, to participate in. I think right. our administrator has a final comment. Uh, there was a comment just uh, placed up and uh, the suggestion would be potentially Lynn Park. We have the, uh, the cement there that has the baseball, or I'm sorry, the skateboard the, the, park. The double thing, Scott, Memorial Park in Lynn. It has a cement pad, it has washrooms, we have lights. Uh, the only concern is going to be your, your close proximity to homes 
but we've always heard we don't want it in our backyard before. Um, so, you know, we have to look at all options, but that is a, a good location to uh, start if you want to take a look at that. Two all right. Well, thank you very much right. for your time. Well, thank you very much for, for your presentation this evening, and uh, we wish you well. And I guess we might hear from you again. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Name. Okay, so that uh, concludes our uh, delegations for this evening. So now we're on to section seven for uh, staff reports. Uh, item 7.1, this is a, a strategic plan update. So I'm looking for a mover and seconder to receive that report. So moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Linton, that report number A-20-54 be received. Any comments or questions around that report, uh, Council? All right, I just have a, a question for, for council. As we know, this type of document uh, should be a living document. Um, and, and I think the intention is that that may go beyond just the updates and it's great to receive the, the updates. I'm just wondering, especially since we're undergoing a service delivery review right now, and that's you know into its uh, final phases, do we want to look ahead and maybe uh, think about scheduling a midterm review session, maybe sometime in the spring after budget? Uh, to see if the results of our service delivery re review still align with our strategic initiatives and, and make any tweaks? Is that any interest from council to uh, to do that? Councilor Smith? Probably sometime in the, in the uh, spring. Yeah. Um, because by the time this review is completed, by the time the summary comes back, we're going to be jumping into the full budget yeah. discussion and, and usually never satisfied or pass until March. Yep. So, you know, sometimes in spring, I, I don't see a problem to it. But. Is that, um, that satisfactory to the rest of the council? Yep. Okay, so we'll put that on, on staff's radar. All right, any other comments or questions at this point? Okay, all those in favor? And that's everybody, Carrie, thank you. All right, moving on to item 7.2. Uh, this is a our, uh, building report for September 2020. Looking for a mover and seconder to receive that. Uh, moved by Councillor Renault, seconded by Councillor Eady. That report number B 09 20 be received. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? That's everybody. That's carried. Thank you. Okay, item 7.3, this is a report regarding the uh, tender FES 2020 for the generator. Uh, I'll give you a, a general overview of the, uh, the motion here. It's to receive this report uh, to indicate that the tender has been canceled and that the 2020 capital budget allocation of 40,000 uh, will be allocated to reserves for that purpose. So that's what the, the motion reads uh, as it is. Looking for a mover and seconder to get that motion on the table, and then we'll start the discussion. Moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by uh, Councillor Linton. The report number FES, FES 20 11 be received, and tender FES 2020 43 be cancelled, and that the 2020 capital budget allocation of $40,000 for the purchase of a fire station one generator be allocated to reserves for that purpose. So, Questions, Council? Comments? If any. Okay. Well, uh, I have made a, a note here. I'm just. So, a clarification. Uh, in the report, it talks about if this motion is approved by Council, further advertising will be placed in, in Mercs. Am I correct in interpreting that to mean that this particular one as issued was not advertised on, on Mercs? Okay. Um, so, so I have to I have to say I'm always uncomfortable when we when we get tenders and then we set them aside and then we go back out because of course it exposes the pricing and then it puts the people that have responded initially in good faith at a bit of a disadvantage as the process comes forward. Um, so I'll tell you the, the note that I made on on this and that was to to discuss the rationale behind doing that versus if it's our intention to put this forty thousand in reserves and then go ahead with this again next year after we've re-advertised it. Um, at, 
the end of the day, we're going to spend essentially forty thousand out of this year, and whatever the difference the difference ends up being out of next year. So we arrive at the same finish line if we go ahead and do the work as we intended to this year, since it was identified in our strat plan, and we go ahead and budget next year to backfill the deficit that will be created this year. It's six of one, half a dozen of the other. It's only a case of whether we have the generator in case we need it this season and what we're going to do to the people who've already responded. I don't know what council's feeling is on, on either of those two things, but that's what I had identified. Or, sorry, our, our administrator, do you have any comments? I, I'm not sure whether the fire chief wants to comment on that. Sure. Uh, chief, did you want to get in on that? No, thank you. Uh, uh, your worship and council. Uh, yeah, again, like I said, sort of unfortunate circumstances. Uh, during the process of, of uh, when we're doing the tender through, basically, we had to upsize uh, the, uh, the generator itself to accommodate the compressor at, at station one. And so anyways, we did a complete load test uh, on it. And again, uh, we're certainly advised that the, the 40 kilowatt, which we were budgeting for, uh, would not be sufficient and, and you know, could cause uh, other problems down the road with, with uh, basically brownouts or, or whatever. Uh, so anyways, we, we did have to upsize to a 60 kilowatt, which of course, uh, you know, jumped the price uh, substantially. Uh, so anyways, that's about, you know, where we're at. Uh, now, again, I, I know with the, the future news station, I, I know it was mentioned at a, a past meeting or a previous meeting that, uh, you know, perhaps that's an ideal time to, uh, to put one out there as well when the building is being constructed. And again, in the tender plan, uh, we included wiring and the automatic transfer switch for that future purpose. So, you know, again, economically, you know, whether we would get a better price if, uh, you know, if, if we asked for pricing for two, uh, you know, that, that's unknown, I guess, till they come in. And, but uh, your worship, I certainly understand what you mean, uh, you know, sort of our, our eggs in the basket have, have been exposed, so. Uh, you know, we're a bit of a catch-22, however it is what it is. Okay, thank you. And, uh, okay. So uh, I'll open it up for any further discussion. Uh, if you so desire, Council. Yes, Councillor Smith. Uh, well, and Councillor Renault. Your Worship, I, I do agree that, first of all, that uh, since we're looking at uh, station number three, we have discussed the generator um, ourselves for that station. And by putting two generators out on a tender on Mercs, uh, um, I would say that you're gonna probably get a better bang for your buck. Uh, fortunately, because of this tender did not go on Mercs and we only received two uh, uh, submissions, which uh, I very strongly uh, spoke of um, because there's many other people out there uh, in the generator business. So unfortunately, I, I'm going to uh, accept by canceling this and that we uh, re-tender with the uh, generator for station three uh, next year. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Renault? No, Rob answered that question. I wanted to know, was this not put on Mercs the first time? So Rob answered that. Thank you. Okay, yeah, and, and if the concept is to, to go out and tender for two or at least provide that option or what have you, so, so long as we're doing something different I guess I'm, I'm a little bit more comfortable, you know, with with that recommendation. I just I just want to be sensitive uh, to the to the marketplace and and not send the wrong signals that, you know, these people put their time in when they respond to the tenders and they did it in good faith and but that's fine. So I'm, I'm just comfortable now. All right, so I'll go ahead and call the uh, the question. All those in favor? And okay, that's everybody. That's Carrie. Thank you. Alrighty, moving on to section eight, our committee reports. Uh, we have just the one committee report to receive this evening. So I have a, mo a motion to uh, receive the Public Works and Waste Management Committee of the whole meeting minutes and to instruct uh, staff to prepare the necessary speed reduction bylaws as we discussed at that meeting. So mover and seconder. So uh, moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Reedy that the Public Works Waste Management Committee of the whole meeting minutes of October 5th, 2020 be received and that staff be instructed to prepare the necessary speed reduction bylaw for the 6th Concession Road, 7th Concession Road, and Fulford Point Road for Council's consideration. 
Any uh, comments, questions, corrections, or discussion around that set of minutes? Yes, Councillor Smith. Just a uh, comment uh, in regards to the sixth and seventh uh, concession roads, as we discussed in our public works meeting. Um, I would uh, strongly supporting this based on safety of road users and pedestrians, and uh, also reducing the uh, the speed on gravel roads will reduce air pollution and the amount of dust and dirt particulates in the atmosphere. In regards to Fulford Point Road, it's a single lane road with a steep hill with no exit. If a vehicle is heading south on Fulford Point Road and approaches the crest of the hill, a driver loses visibility of what's at the bottom of the hill. It could be a pedestrian, it could be a vehicle. Therefore, for everyone's safety, uh, I support the reduction on Fulford Point Road as well. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Councillor Brady. Too much speed. Uh, Fulford Point is at 50. It, it, and goes 30. Yeah, she 30. Yeah, to our administrative work. Yes, uh, the 7th and the 6th are to 60, and Fulford Point Road is to be dropped to 30. Okay, any other comments or questions, Council? All right, all those in favor? Proposed, Penny? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. All right, moving on to our bylaws. And we have a number for first and second reading, bylaw number 20 36, 37, and 38. Looking for a mover and seconder for those uh, first and second readings. Moved by Councillor Renault, seconded by Councillor Smith, uh, that the mover be granted leave to introduce bylaws number 20 36, 20 37, and 20 38. And this shall constitute the first and second reading thereof. All those in favor? That's everybody that's carried. Thank you. All right, moving on to third reading of those same bylaws. Does any member of council wish any of these to be broken out and voted on separately? Okay, seeing none then, I'm looking for a mover and seconder uh, for the third reading. Moved by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Brayton. The bylaws numbered 20-36. 20-37 and 20-38 be now read a third time, finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered according. All those in favor? That's everybody. That's carried. Thank you. We have one uh, correspondence item uh, this evening from Allen and Partners, our uh, auditors, regarding the audit plan for 2020. Looking for a mover and seconder uh, to receive and file that item. Moved by Councillor Brayton, seconded by Councillor Smith. Correspondence item 10.1 be received and filed. Any comments or questions? Any desire to respond to that letter in any way? Okay, all those in favor? And opposed, if any? That's carried. All right, uh, information items. Does any member of council have any information items at this time? Okay, seeing none, uh, section 12, motions and notices of motion. We do, we did have a notice of motion uh, by Councillor Renault. Uh, the council instructs staff to develop a settlement area uh, for spring and fall yard waste collection program, including options and applicable costs for council's consideration. I'm going to assume that you wish to move this, Councillor Renault. And so I am looking for a seconder for that motion. And seconded by Councillor E as read. Okay, motion is now on the table. And so uh, Councillor No, did you wish to uh, begin by speaking to this? Yes, um, numerous times when I have been campaigning over the years, I've had this question uh, from people in the settlement areas. And then I was reminded of it again this fall um, that some municipalities have a uh, free day or an amnesty day, or they have pickup uh, of yard waste or large items. So I thought we should be looking at this for our settlement areas, especially with us not wanting backyard fires. This would help the fire department as well. 
and not having nuisance calls because the smoke from the neighbor's fire is in their backyard or it actually getting away on them and starting a fire. Uh, it, would, it would solve a lot of different problems and it would be a good service even if uh, it came to the point where we would have to maybe charge for pickup, but I think it would be a good service for our residents. Okay, thank you very much. Any comments or questions? Yes, Councillor Brayton. Yeah, I uh, don't disagree with you, but I'm just wondering, we, we have a free uh, yard disposal for leaves and uh, uh, brush at the waste site right now, and it costs us quite a bit of money to grind that off. The, the pile is enormous, and the, the residents are getting, uh, getting, bringing it in for free. And my, my, my last reckon, but in the uh, spring and fall would be, uh, we got a, a roads crew uh, right now. We've got one guy off on sick leave. We have three off on three, one is retired, Two are going to be retiring shortly. That's four employees. And in the spring and fall, traditionally, it's quite busy for changing, getting ready to snow, uh, plow snow and, and getting ready for to get the trucks ready and on, uh, taking the wings and the front ends off and grading roads and putting stone on and, and whatever. I don't have no problem with uh, the, the people would bring their waste to the waste site and have it free the same as it always has been. But I don't think, I, I think it's a, a big load onto the township to, at this time anyway, I think it's a big load on the township to, uh, to undertake this, Mr. Mayor. And that's what I'm afraid of, like we take it on and, and should we be doing roads instead of drawing garbage out of somebody's backyard that they could maybe probably do themselves. So that's the way I stand on it. Okay, just to, just to provide a little bit of clarification that the motion reads for staff to come back with uh, options and costs. So I'm going to assume that uh, us doing, a, doing it in-house might be one option, but there may be other ways to, to do it as well, which may address some of your concerns, but, but that's fine, duly noted. Any other comments? Yes, Councillor Smith. Uh, to Councillor Renault, um, what areas, settlement areas, are you looking at to have a location or locations for uh, yard waste to be as a depot? So oh, I was. You, uh, Councillor Renault, I think our administrator had uh, some comments. Sorry, I, um, I, I think I was going to comment and on behalf of Councillor Renault, the idea was potentially to either have a depot, that's an, an idea that we can investigate, or to have uh, actual door-to-door -door pickup um, within the settlement areas as defined within our zoning bylaw and uh, official plan. Uh, sorry, Councillor Renault. And, and so I'll, I'll give you a chance now, Councillor Renault, to, to chime in either to confirm or to expand on that, and then I... I know that uh, Councillor Smith has a follow-up. Yes, what Yvonne said is correct. Um, and after speaking with the fire chief, uh, he would be behind this 100% because they do get a lot of calls. And Rob mentioned earlier that the uh, dust from a gravel road is putting dirt in the atmosphere. What do you think a backyard fire is doing? Just saying. Okay, thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, so I, I guess it's just a follow-up, but uh, until council um, uh, passes, if they wish to pass this motion, until we see costs, it's kind of hard to speculate, but um, as uh, colleague Council Brayton has alluded to, uh, there's going to be a cost, and as we know that we just mentioned, we're only looking at settlement areas. We're not looking at the township as a whole. Um, and that means all taxpayers are going to be paying for this. And, you know, people move to, this 
the Val Kitley for the country charm and for affordable living, um, I don't think we should expect um, the same amenities as a city would, such as having MSD days, you know, yard waste pickup days and whatever, because we're not in that kind of business where we don't have the whole entire township into a garbage collection business. I know where you're coming from. I, I like your concept, but I think until there's costs associated with it and laid on the table, it's kind of hard to make any decision with this. So I know you want to just have staff go through this. I just don't know if it's, it's the, if it's time, uh, time wasted, shouldn't use that word wasted, but if it's the right way to do it, that's all. So looking for uh, others to chime in if you wish the, the opportunity and then uh, I'll go ahead and call it. But yes, Councillor Linton. I would, I would again like to hear some of the costs, just a few more details of where exactly we would do it, that kind of thing. Not, not against the idea, just like to hear a little more information about it. Okay, thank you. All right, so that seems to, to be the, the fundamental intent of the, of the motion at this time. We've had a, a decent discussion for a first step here, so I'm gonna go ahead and call the, the question then. All those in favor? This is for uh, this is to uh, refer to instruct staff to develop uh, options and, and a report with options and costs for council's consideration. So again, so all those in favor? And opposed, if any. Okay, well, that was everybody, so that's carried. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, section thirteen, public question period. Have we received any questions this evening? Uh, there were no questions from the public. Okay, no questions from the public. So we're now going to move into a closed meeting. And so uh, this is to uh, discuss two matters under subsection 2C, proposed or pending acquisition of, or disposition of land by municipality or local board, and one matter under subsection 2B, personal matters about an identifiable individual. I'm looking for a mover and seconder. Uh, to adjourn the regular council meeting and move into close. And so moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Brayton, that the regular meeting of council adjourn into a closed meeting of council at 7.53 p.m. Uh, under section 239 of the Municipal Act as specified below to facilitate discussion with respect to two matters under subsection 2C, Proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board. One matter under subsection 2B, personal matters about an identifiable individual. All those in favor. And that's carried. Thank you. Just a moment to end the live streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yvonne, I got this. Um, you didn't have to fix this. Oh, good. Okay.